Welcome to Nîmes, France. This huge amphitheatre is one of many well-preserved Roman ruins this city boasts. It's time now, though, for archery's best archers to take to their stage for the first time in 2022. Happy New Year to you all, and welcome to the medal matches at the Nîmes Archery Tournament. I'm Karen Bashir, and joining me for commentary is John Knott from GB Archery. Well, how good is it to be back, especially if you're French? It's absolutely brilliant to be back at this famous archery arena here in Nîmes. Really strong showing from the French athletes this week, and this is going to give them an invaluable experience shooting on home soil. Now you told me this is a 4,000 seater stadium. Looks pretty good there at the moment, pretty lively. The atmosphere in here is absolutely electric. And when the French are shooting, it's lightning bolts. Yeah, and there's plenty of French athletes in the lineup. We are going to go through all the medal matches in the senior event here in Nîmes. Starting with the women's compound bronze and gold medal matches. You can see the stage is set. Now out come the judge and the coaches for the first match. go time for the lineup for match number one here in this session the first live session of archery in 2022 sees the compound women's bronze medal match between Sophie Dodemont of France getting a big cheer here and she goes up against the Dutch archer Sander Latt Great lineup, John. This is a fantastic lineup. The number three versus the number four seed here this weekend. I'm expecting to see a lot of tens. Pre match photos are done. And the athletes will make their way to the shooting line. Time now for world number 24, Sophie Dodemont of France to take on the world number 12, Sanderlat of the Netherlands for the compound women's bronze medal match. The wait is over. It's time for the first of the medal matches of 2022 on the International World Archery Circuit. Dodemont starts this bronze medal match against Delat with a nine.
these two athletes, they've shot in so many finals arenas around the world at so many levels. They should not be facing here at all. So I'm expecting to see them uh, center up and really get on with the business fast. Well, right on cue, John. Dalat gets a 10. So pressure on Dodemont already. The cumulative score in compound archery, 15 arrows shot. So early stages, a 27 for Dodemont in the first end. And just eking out a one point lead, Sandalat after the first end. Goes ahead, four more to come. Well, John, you mentioned the experience. Sophie Dodemont is, of course, a former recurve archer. Yep, Sophie Dodemont helped win a uh, bronze medal in 2008 Olympics with the French ladies team. Uh, after that, she retired and then appeared as a compound archer and then became world champion with compound. Twenty-six-year-old Sandra Lat chatting with a coach. World number twelve. She's come through. Uh, well, almost entirely French field. Gabrion, Amard, and uh, Lola Grandjean through the rounds before losing to Priels in the semi-finals. That's what's brought it to this bronze medal match. And with Delat leading by one, Sophie Dodemont will get the second end underway. Still not found the center, making a minor adjustment to her sight. Both uh, struggling to find the 10 at the moment, quite surprised. But again, it's a nervy uh, bronze medal match to kick off our afternoon. holds producing two tens and a 29 for Dodemont well, when the pressure was on there was enough from Sandalat so we are all square at 56 apiece uh, started started a little bit low didn't it John are they just trying to get used to the conditions in there with all these lights and, and everything I, I, as I always say out there, it's a bit like shooting in a pressure cooker. You've got a big crowd behind you who have got expectations, as you can hear. You've been practicing in a room that's very different in conditions before you come out. And, and it, how quickly you adjust normally decides this match. We also saw uh, Dodemont playing to the crowd a little bit there. Is that a sign of how relaxed she is? She likes shooting at home? I think she was relieved more than relaxed. <laughs> but yes, the French crowd like the French to win. And they don't uh, they get behind their people always. Well, it's making for a, a great atmosphere here. All square in the compound women's bronze medal match here in the Nîmes. And it will be over to Dodemont again to get us underway. It's end number three. Ten. That's a third in a row for Dodemont into the center of the target. Ten. As the lap found the middle at the same time.
both these guys now look like they're starting to relax into the match and do what they're best doing, which is shooting tens. And that's an absolute donut from Godamont there. Does that just clip the line? So, chance for Delat here to re establish the lead. And a perfect 30 from her. She has found the middle. 86 plays 85. And it's the Dutch athlete in the lead against the French archer here in Nîmes. Well, John, three tens in a row from uh, Dodemont, four from Delat. Yeah, absolutely. It's good, isn't it? They. Once these guys find their mark, it's about how you put the pressure on your opponent to try and force them to miss. Because if they all do their process correct, they don't. And you say uh, the, the next end is the critical one, which well, certainly is for Dodemont. She needs to close the gap or at least stay within one. Absolutely. Uh, you wouldn't want to be going into the last three arrows any more than one point behind to have a chance really. Dodemont trailing by one. We'll shoot first in end number four. Still going low, still making adjustments. Fifth ten Dodeman. for Delat. Dodeman now needs to not miss. Ten. Sand just looking so calm now. Her shot timing is brilliant. Where Dodeman's shot timing's been a bit more inconsistent out of the two. Well, question mark over that one, provisionally marked as a 10. And that's the second perfect in a row for Sander Latt. She is definitely on 116. We wait for Dodemon's arrows to be measured. Do you have a feeling on this one, John? Uh, I think Dodemont's last one just pulled the line. I, I think she'll get it, and she needs it. Yeah. Was trailing by one, needs the markup to limit the damage. I think we heard it there, a 10-10-9. You were right, John, a 29 for Dodemont, but she is going to be going into the final end, trailing by two. That's a big ask, especially when you look at who's on the other side of the shooting line. It really is. And Dodemont needs to find her, her rhythm and her pro believe in her process for these last three arrows. She has to shoot three tens and just hope that she has to hope that San misses one and gets nervous. The first competition of the year on the international circuit. Nerves will play their part, but you'd rather be in Sander Latt's shoes. Dodemont trailing by two. We'll shoot first in the fifth and final end. Yeah. Oh, great shot from her. Uh, all square in this set. It's not enough for Dodemont. I 
don't think there's a lot now that Dodemont can do because the way San is shooting these arrows, they're just going inside out. The 10 will apply some pressure. Popped it into the nine. Well, you can see it there, a seven is enough. But finishes with another 30, another perfect. That was three in a row from Sandalat. She has taken this bronze medal here in Nîmes against Sophie Dodemont, 146 to 142. Uh, John, they seem to find their form, Dodemont, in fact, in the last hour of the uh, second end. But Sander Lapp found a form well, almost exactly the same time and just kept the pressure on. Absolutely. Uh, once Sand missed four shots really early on in that match, she looked a bit nervous, a bit confused. Once she got her sight into that 10, she finished with 10 tens in a row. What a way to take it. We take a look back over highlights of the match. Sophie Dodemont going up against Sander Lapp for compound women's bronze medal here in the Nîmes Archery Tournament. They both found their rhythm partway through the second end. But Sander Lapp then did not drop any points through three, four, and five and went on to take this bronze medal here in Nîmes, 146 to 142. and judge on the shooting line coming out ahead in the first gold medal match of this session the crowd getting right behind this as we wait for the athletes to be presented to them here in Nîmes First contender for gold here in Nîmes is France's very own Sandra Hervé. Just to hop over the border into Belgium, finds us Sarah Priels, competing here in Nîmes for the first gold medal of 2022 in the compound women's discipline. John, another couple of great athletes here for this medal match. Absolutely, Sandra Herb on a bit of a roll. She ranked in ninth place and took out the number one on her way into the finals. Priels ranked two, probably one of the best indoor shooters ever in this game, Sarah Priels. World number 10, Sarah Priels from Belgium, takes on the world number 133, Sandra Hervé, with the home crowd behind her here in France. It's time for the compound women's gold medal match. <laughs> Lefty against righty, so back to back here on the shooting line. Sandra Hervé of France to get this gold medal match underway.
Herb looks like she's really got her sight set. One of the first people this afternoon to come out finding the 10. Creels looks a bit anxious on that first arrow. Um. of sorts on the face of Sarah Prills, that last arrow for a 28. And the first arrow for Sandra Hervé is subject to a measure, Jean. What do you think? Uh, I think it's going to be there. I think she just pulled the line at the bottom. I think you called it spot on there. So 29 for Sandra Hervé means that she takes the lead after the first by a single point here in Nîmes. Those measures so important, John. Absolutely, but I, that was a good one I felt from what I could see. So, Sandra Hervé with a one point lead. If we look back at some of the shots, the reaction of Sarah Priels. Spirits remain high on the Belgian side of the shooting line. We go into end number two, and Sarah Priel's training by one will shoot first. Creel's not looking quite settled yet. I think once she does settle down, she'll slow down a bit as well. Much better shot there from Sarah. More like Sarah's timing and accuracy. Uh, matched by Sandra Hervé. So that uh, one point deficit remains in place. John, you called it there. You're saying that Prills, once she settled, would shoot better. Are we seeing signs of that now? Yep, yep. Sarah's not normally a really fast shooter. And I was surprised at the speed of her first few arrows, but her sixth shot there was the Sarah Priels. I know that once she's in that groove, she probably won't leave that 10 much now. Well, quick retrieval this time in between the ends for the agents. No measures required here, but both archers matching each other in that second end. Hints of Priels settling into her rhythm, though. She still trails by one. Herve leading 58-57, so it will be the Belgian archer to shoot first in the third end of this gold medal match.
evidence remains that Prills has settled. <laughs> Likewise, on the other side of the shooting line, though. Sandra Herb really keeping up well with set, well, keeping the lead still with Sarah Preels in this match, looking very comfortable out there, but that has just fallen a little bit low. She sniffed the opportunity and just slightly tightened Preels. Well, matched again. But it was that turnaround in the second arrow that made the difference. And we're all square here, John. This is really tensed up in the last few arrows. Yeah, it's. I've seen some really great shots from both athletes, but it's just been a few shots where they're just a little bit quick and they're just rushing, I feel. Very easy to sit here and criticize, but you know, it's 20 seconds and that's a long time really in reality. Taking another look at this one, just to be 100% sure, that's how important this is. Limited number of indoor events before the grand finale in Vegas. So the uh, target judge making sure of the scores as they always do, but just taking a little bit, paying a little bit more attention than perhaps normal. These events are very important, aren't they, John? Absolutely. This event will is combining, of course, with the Las Vegas shoot in two weeks' time in Las Vegas, USA. And there's a lot of prize money up for grabs there as well in the Indoor World Series. All square in the compound women's gold medal match between Hervé and Priels. So Hervé of France will shoot first in end number four. Priels has the lead now. Can she maintain it? Well, in short, no. Pressure switches over to target number one. It's another nine. And a 28 there for Hervé. Chance for Priels again. And she's done it. She's put it in to take the lead here. 115 plays 114. Reels has turned this one around in end number four. Just one more regulation end to go. Big swing there in that end. Preels caught her up. Now she's taken the lead. Can she close this match out on the last end? You look at the trajectory of the athletes. Herve started with the 229s and then dropped to 228. Priel started with a 28 and has shot 29s since. So the momentum certainly with the Belgian at the moment. 114 for Herve, 115 for Priel's. Critical fourth end for the Belgian. She'll shoot second in the fifth. So it's over to Sandra Hervé of France to start end number five.
mini opportunity for Preels. Well, that relieves some pressure. Hervé's now missed three, well, dropped three nines in a row. Sarah Preels is now on a roll, showing why she's the world record holder in this event. Nod of affirmation. Hervé, in a spot of bother, finishes with another nine by the looks of things for a 141. Well, it's all there for you to see. A seven will do this. Priels finishes with a perfect. A great finish to a great match for Sarah Priels. She really played a blinder there, turning it around in the fourth. She's taken the first title of the season here in the compound women's event at the Nimes Archery Tournament of 2022. Consummate performance there, John. Really, really impressive. Hervé came out finding the centre really quick, but couldn't maintain it. She started missing. Creel started really nervy, really edgy, snatching her shots a little bit. But she settled down in the third end and really showed her quality to finally win this title. Smiles all round, finishing with a perfect 30. Sarah Priels of Belgium has taken the compound women's gold medal here at the Nimes Archery Tournament of 2022. Switch disciplines now, Sarah, but before we do that, interview with Sarah Priels. Uh, la médaille d'or uh, ici à Nîmes. Qu'est-ce que tu ressens uh, à la sortie de ce match? Oh, c'est incroyable. Uh, Nîmes, je viens depuis que je suis toute jeune, donc uh, voilà, Gladys Willem, c'est une de mes idoles. Elle a gagné Nîmes au moins cinq fois, je pense. Donc uh, voilà, c'est Nîmes était le tournoi qui me manquait. Je suis très heureuse d'avoir uh, remporté ce match et d'enfin mettre mon nom sur. Uh, ce tournoi. Et tu as commencé euh, justement cette rencontre avec 2-9 avant de oui. te remettre petit à petit dedans. Tu termines même avec un score parfait et 4 points euh, en face de ton adversaire. Comment tu as géré cela C'était compliqué. Hein. On ne sait jamais si euh, le viseur sera la même chose que dans la salle d'entraînement, étant donné que euh, les lumières sont différentes. Donc euh, on ne se met pas trop de pression. On se dit que c'est mal réglé. On règle et puis euh, on essaye de continuer. Et du coup, tu es déjà venu plusieurs fois à Nîmes, tu es une habituée euh, du euh, Indoor World Series. Euh, tu étais même médaillée d'argent en 2020 ici. Euh, Est-ce que... Euh, bon. ça... Ah pardon, parce que... Pas grave. <rire> tu as gagné en tout cas plusieurs médailles sur le, oui. les Indoor World Series. Euh, Est-ce que Nîmes a une saveur particulière Oui, oui, oui. Bah, comme je l'ai dit, euh, c'est un tournoi auquel j'ai participé un nombre... Beaucoup de fois et donc euh, voilà, c'est vraiment un tournoi que je voulais gagner et je pense que je me suis mis trop de pression auparavant. Et donc voilà, finalement arrivé dans le carré final, j'étais contente et en plus en finale pour l'or, bah, c'était parfait. Super, merci beaucoup, merci. félicitations encore. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Brilliant performance from the 31 year old world number 10. Sarah Priels was one of the four marchers here in Nîmes. Coming through the ranking round, ranked second. She started a knockout tournament beating teammate Merlin. But in the end, it was Sarah Priels casting a spell over Neem here in 2022. We move on now to the recurve discipline for the women. And coming out the judge and 
coaches for the bronze medal match. Italian affair, number one rack, Tatiana Andrioli of Italy on the left against her teammate, the world, and number 10 ranked seventh through the ranking round, Lucia Boari. Well, both of these archers competed in Tokyo at the Olympic Games just a few months ago. And it was Boari who came away with the individual bronze medal from that Olympics. What a lineup, all Italy, John. Absolutely. What an opportunity here for these two teams made against each other, looking it out for the, uh, the bronze medal and see who gets the bragging rights for the day. We switch over to the recurve discipline, as we said, set system, first to six set points. You win two set points if you take a set from your opponent. Points shared if the scores after three hours are the same. Time for the recurve women's bronze medal match here in Nîmes. Andrioli to shoot first. This is what you want to see, two really experienced athletes, great competitors, both coming out, finding the 10 straight away. Perfect start for Andrioli. And a perfect start for Bowery as well. So can't say too much about that. They haven't missed the center of the target. Uh, one thing I will say though, very young. Tatiana Andrioli is just 23 and here Lucia Boari is just 24. So you say experienced, but uh, they've got bags of time in the sport left. They've both been highly competitive on the youth circuit before they were in their 20s. So these guys have probably been shooting youth internationals for the best part of 10 years each. Well, they've come out here on fire. Perfect scores for the pair of them through the first set. So one set point each. We go to set number two. Andrioli to shoot first again. Well, when they shoot this well, it's a big surprise when they miss the center of the target. This is absolutely outstanding archery right now. You can see both of these uh, competitors, they train a lot, they're both physically fit, and this is the result. Another perfect, a little wince then from Andrioli. The archers 
a perfectionist. If that shot didn't feel as good as she wanted it to, that's why you'll see the wince. And another perfect from Lucia Boari. This, as you say, John, is uh, quite incredible. What a standard these two are setting. Yeah, and they're making it look really easy. This is high pressure stuff. And I don't even see a bead of sweat yet, do you? <laughs> I don't. Andrioli is having a little bit of a giggle and a laugh and a smile. Like. They both look so composed. That's what it's all about. So solid on the shooting line as well. So all square after two sets of this bronze medal match here in Nîmes. Italy will be walking away with the bronze medal, but will it be Tatiana Andrioli or Lucia Boari? Set number three, two apiece. Andrioli to shoot first. There's the first drop points. Well, that's what happens, isn't it? When one, one breaks the seal, the other one does as well. And you can hear the crowd a little bit then. But can they both bottle back down and get back in that 10 zone? Not for Bahari. Well, well, well. The second arrow for Andrioli's gone for a measure. It's marked as a nine on the scoreboard at the moment, but they're going to have a little look at that on target number one. Uh, but I think the technical term for that, John, is uh, the pair of them got the heebie-jeebies. They, they just, I felt they slowed down a bit. Uh, that's the, they were obviously like, aware of how well they were doing. Andrioli shot the seventh in a row. And then Ferrari missed, and it just kind of changes the game a bit because it was almost they were putting a show on for everyone. And you, the, the tough crowd in there were like sighing, weren't they? Yeah. So that's confirmation of Boari's score of 22nd, 27, and 1099, I think, was called on Andrioli. Either way, it's enough for the set points. A 4-2 lead now for Andrioli. But what a strange set that was. So for the first time in the match, Lucia Boari from Italy on target number two will shoot first. She's trailing by four set points to two. A must do something about putting some pressure back on her compatriot Andrioli on target number one. Yeah. That will settle a bit. Just caught her taking a really deep yeah. breath there. Looking a bit more serious now, both of them as we're deeper into the match and they're getting closer to that finishing line, but Adrioli is back in her groove. So provisionally marked as a 29, but the second arrow for Barari's gone for a measure. Andrioli 
can do with a 10 to guarantee at least one point. Gets it and another perfect. So both marked on the scoreboard officially with 30s, but I believe the second arrow of Boari is going for a measure. It looked to be on the line to me, John. That's easily in. There you go, confirmation that it is by the target judge. And that means the set points are shared for the third time in the match. Crucially, going into the fifth, it does mean that Andrioli leads teammate Boari by five set points to three. Remember, the target score is six. So Andrioli just has to draw the next set to take this bronze medal. Time for set number five here. Boali trailing her teammate Andrioli by five set points to three. Will shoot first and has to put down some big scores to put some pressure on her opponent. This is an impressive display here from Adrioli. Yeah. She cannot afford to miss now. Big pressure on this shot, has to go in the 10 to give her a chance here to force the tie break. Gone into the nine for a 29. So a nine is enough for Andrioli. She puts it into the 10 for her third, sorry, her fourth 40, her fourth perfect of the match. And she takes it seven set points to three. Andrioli will be on the podium in the bronze medal position here in Nîmes. Oh, John, what a difference a set can make. Set number three was a, a 27 for most archers. That's a great score, but a disaster for Boari in set number three. Yeah, absolutely. Boari missed. And kind of threw both of them, but Adrioli had already shot her first arrow in the 10. I think they were just thinking about more of the performance as a whole and just their own individual matches at that point. But on that very last arrow of the match, Boari's release was a bit loose. It came away from her face. The arrow went right into the nine, and Adrioli, she was not going to be kind. She saw her teammate off. Taking a look back over it, it was the Chiribari who dropped three nines, having shot a perfect score up to that point in the third set that opened the door for her teammate Tatiana Andrioli. It was the top seed coming through the ranking rounds, fought her way through the qualifications and has battled her way onto the podium, taking bronze here in Nîmes. Time to go for gold again here in Nîmes. And it's an all French affair. 
crowd get presented with Caroline Lopez, the 18-year-old. She's going up against her 21-year-old teammate, Lisa Barbala. Oh, the crowd really getting behind these two French athletes. Lisa Barbalan leading out her teammate Caroline Lopez, former world youth champion Barbalan, the European champion and Tokyo Olympian. John, big match up here against, uh, with two promising French athletes. Absolutely. This is you know, uh, Lisa Barbalan, leading athlete now around Europe and her up and coming teammate and also club mate by the look of their shirts. So this could be quite an exciting match. Time for the recurve women's gold medal match. Barbalan shooting first here for gold in Nîmes against teammate Caroline Lopez. Ooh, has she clipped the line there, Lopez? France have a really young and upcoming ladies team. Obviously, Barbalan is kind of the established one of the three. They've made some big changes since the Olympics and going into Paris now. This is priceless for all of them. Well, this opportunity is priceless for Lopez and she's taken it. That's some pretty good shooting there from uh, Lopez taking on her fancy teammate. 29 at the moment plays 28, but I fancy that could get marked up to 30. And as you say, John, part of these two are part of three young archers bidding for their slot at the Paris Games on home soil. Barbalan very much the leader of the pack, but uh, here Lopez has got off to the better start. Absolutely. Lopez started out, caught a liner on the first one, two solid tens after that. She's sewing no respect to her friend for the prestige of who should be winning this match. Well, coaches in the box supporting the athletes. There's two set points to Caroline Lopez against her fancy teammate Lisa Barbalat. These two very much vying for Olympic spots for Paris 2024. Again, here in Nîmes, it's a lefty against a righty here on the show range. This time they're facing each other. High left nine. An impressive fourth ten for Lopez. Barbalan shots very precise. Her time is her time, she doesn't rush. Her teammate here really, really attacking that 10 and showing us a fearless display of uh, how to shoot well in a final. Uh, 
Moving in the right direction for Barbara but Lopez on for her second 30 of the match. And she's hit it. Perfect score so far from Caroline Lopez to go 4 0 up against Lisa Barbara. John, she's looking very relaxed, very composed, and, and no real signs of pressure on her face when she's shooting on the line. Absolutely, she's at match point upon Barbalam right now, but will she suddenly realize what she's doing in this next set and let Barbalam <laughs> back in? Yeah, biggest enemy perhaps, her mind and thinking too far ahead. She's just got to think about the next arrow. Perhaps the next set. Barbalan Keen ready to get going for the third. She knows she's going to be shooting first. Trademark bouncing up and down on the fronts of her feet. The sports need a, a character, and Lisa Barbalan over, well, the lockdown period, you have to say, has shown that she certainly brings bags of emotion to the shooting line. Set number three of the compound women's gold medal match, Barbaland trailing 4-0 will shoot first against teammate Lopez here in Nîmes. What a shot. <laughs> Trying to apply the pressure. Has that done enough? Has that gone up into the nine? Marked as a 10 on the scoreboard. Oh. Now has that one clipped the line? Well, there's a couple of ju the judges going to have his work cut out up there. But Lopez straight <laughs> back in the 10. <laughs> well, marked the perfect 30 for Barbara. That's a 10. The second one's a 10. It's the first one we need to have a look at. I think either way here, John, Barbalan is definitely going to be keeping this match alive. Well, Barbalan had to shoot a 30 then, or nothing else would have been able to keep her in the match. But there is an arrow that's a bit tall from both of them, and they are so close to call. I think Barbalan's will be good, and Lopez's will be a 9. Yeah, sounds like the first arrow from Lopez was marked as a 9 for a 29. And as you said, Barbalands has been confirmed as a 10. So not only has Barbaland kept the match alive, she's taken the third set here and now trails just by two. We'll take a look back at a couple of the shots there. Now a bit of an angry look on the face of Lisa Barbalan. Still no emotion from the Lopez but just yet. 4-2. Barbalan got really aggressive then with the shooting. Yeah, she certainly did. And, and with her facial expression as well. She's got herself back into the match. She's got to stay a little angry. She's going to shoot first. It's time for set number four. left a little smile the first emotion we've seen from Lopez in the match Barbalan has just dialed up the pressure two notches on Lopez 
and Lopez has just shown the first signs of thinking about it. She still looks happy, but there's a bit of anxiety now on that face. Second perfect for Barbara She's definitely got the points here. She's definitely drawn level. It's important arrow though for Lopez. And clips it on the line by the looks of things for a 28, but her lowest score in the match. And as you say, John, pressure applied in bundles by Barbalan. 100% Barbalan has sped up her shooting. Yeah, she's gone from being a bit cautious in those first two sets to a lot more flowing, much more aggressive in attacking. And it came down to that one millimeter on that line call just to set a little bit of doubt into Lopez's mind. And look at that, we're now all square. French crowd getting into this one. Being pumped up by the music here in the Sud de France Nîmes Archery Tournament. Set number five starts with Barbalan. She hits another 10. Marked as a nine for a measure here, though. <laughs> Definite 10 for Lopez. Barbalan is so dialed in now. Look at that game face she has got. You would not want to upset her. Great comeback there as well from uh, Lopez. Yeah, she's definitely found her rhythm again, but there is the snarl of gritty determination. She's popped that up into the nine. The first one is going to a measure as well. That could get marked up. She could be on a 28, she could be on a 29, Barbalan. A nine makes this very, very interesting indeed. We have to wait for the measure, John. Uh oh, this has been a great match. The determination from Barbalan, but has she done enough to force a tie break? I, I think it's gonna be a shoot off. Barbalan's got 29. Oh, you've called it. That first arrow, there it is. It does look like it's clipping the line and cutting the line. It looks like the target judge has marked it up for a 29 as well. So Barbalan does get what she needs to force the shoot off. Five apiece after five regulation sets. And we go to a tiebreaker in our first recurve gold medal match of 2022. You can't ask for better than this. You've got teammates from the same country in the host country. The crowd are loving it. You can feel the electricity coming through the screen right now. So target faces to be replaced. Pink target faces in case we need a measure. And we go straight to a one arrow shoot off here in Nîmes. What more could the crowd want? What more could you want at home than this thrilling entertainment coming down to just a single arrow? Here we go. Compound, sorry, recurve women's gold. Medal match being decided between Barbalan and Lopez, both from France, on a shoot off here in Nîmes. Beatable. Ten on the line. And that's a nine. And Lisa Barbalan from four set points to nil down 
has fought her way back here in Nîmes with a display, well, of unfathomable proportions. She's taken the Nîmes gold in a shoot-off from a gutsy, gamey Caroline Lopez, her 18-year-old compatriot. But it is Lisa Barbalan, the champion of Nîmes 2022. Wow, John, what a match, what a performance from both the athletes, just in slightly different ways. What an absolutely fantastic match. Great display of camaraderie between the two athletes through the entire match. Uh, Lisa Barbalin just showing that she is the boss still out there. So technically, not a lot you could pick out on either of these athletes to say where they went wrong. Just great display of archery. Brilliant performance from Lisa Barbalan from four set points to love down. She fought her way back into it and took it in a shoot off against her teammate. What a strong pair this is. Barbalan leading a group of young athletes on the road to Paris 2024 for the host nation. I feel there's a warning shot being uh, sent there today that the French women's team are going to be something to deal with in Paris. High fives from the coach there after an amazing comeback from Lisa Barbalan of France here in Nîmes. She's taken the title in 2022. The French team are looking very strong. They may have a chance to speak to the gold medalist. Félicitations, tu viens de gagner euh, le tournoi de Nîmes. Qu'est-ce que tu ressens là tout de suite Ça c'est une explosion d'émotions. Je ne saurais pas trop quoi dire. Je suis immensément contente de ce qui vient de se passer. Ça a été un match de folie du début à la fin. Caro a été juste impressionnante du début à la fin. Et je suis trop fière de là où on est aujourd'hui toutes les deux. Tu as justement commencé un petit peu difficilement ce match, tu perds les deux premiers sets face à des scores parfaits de ton adversaire et puis tu reviens à la troisième, tu enchaînes les 10 et le match se termine sur le barrage. Comment tu as géré tout ça J'ai essayé d'être très calme dans ce que je faisais et d'aller à la NIA qui a l'envie d'aller jusqu'au bout et de jamais rien lâcher. Et c'est ce qui s'est passé et c'est trop bien. <rire> C'était important pour toi de gagner ce tournoi de Nîmes peu importe la place, peu importe où est-ce que j'étais sur le podium, ce qui était important, c'était de donner le meilleur de moi-même et c'est ce que j'ai fait. Et c'est en ça que je suis vraiment très fière. Très bien, merci beaucoup Lisa, merci. encore félicitations. <rire> merci beaucoup. Lisa, tu peux nous dire tout sur la photo euh... Oui. Alors on la voit plus là, mais ouais. la, la photo, c'était quand Well, we've said it before, John, our French is not perfect, but one thing's for sure, there's Archery's poster girl for 2024. Absolutely, that will be happening for sure. Yeah, young, friendly, just 21 years old and so composed in front of camera and so composed in her match up and comeback in the gold medal match. Time now for the compound men's bronze medal match here in Nîmes 2022. The athletes coming out to be presented to the crowd here in Nîmes and to you at home. Competing for the compound men's bronze medal 
will be Italy's Sergio Pagni, the world ranked number 31. Going to ranking round the 595 to be ranked fifth. He goes up against the 18 year old Dane and the world number two, Matthias Fullerton. He shot a 597 in qualification to be ranked third. Youth versus experience then, John. Well, absolutely. You've got Sergio Pagni, the Sultan of Smooth. He's won every title there is to win indoors. He's won this several times. He's won Las Vegas, and he's also been world indoor champion in this arena back in 2011 or 12. Fullerton, he's been on every podium in the last 12 months, I believe. He certainly blasted his way up through the rankings to become the world number two. Both athletes taking out French opponents in the, the or be, being taken out by French opponents I should say in the semi-finals. Matthias Fullerton losing to JP Bush and uh, Sergio Pagni losing out to Nicolas Girard which has forced them here into the third place playoff. Arguably the toughest match in international sport. Time to get the compound men's bronze medal match underway here in Nîmes and it's over to Matthias Fullerton of Denmark. Yeah. Fat compounder arrows help to clip those lines. Well, that looks like it could be a little low for the 42 year old. Both athletes pretty much have their mark, so this should be a really good match from now on. Going back to a cumulative score here. 29 goes on the scoreboard for the 18 year old teenager, the Danish teenager, I should say, and a 29. For the 42 year old 29 apiece you say they found their marks are we expecting just tens and nines in this match just tens just tens. you set a high bar mr not <laughs> we we'll just take a look back fullerton at 18 years old really has blasted his way onto the scene hasn't he job Absolutely. He, again, he's another one who must have practiced really hard through that lockdown year. Came out at the start of uh, 2021, and I think he made literally every last four all season. You probably very used to seeing him on screen. Martin Damsbo in the box with him. The Danes actually performed incredibly well here, especially through qualification. So no surprise to see them in the medal matches. We go into end number two with the scores all square, so it will be over to Fullerton to start again. Pagni is just the best at looking calm, however much pressure is being thrown at him. Well, 
our first two arrows gone for a measure for Fullerton. That's a definite nine to finish for him. Panny with a chance here. And he makes it with a 30. Going to have the lead by what score we wait for the judges to confirm. Fullerton will get one and not the other. I think the first one was in? Yes. Yeah, Fullerton looked really me. tense on that end, I felt. Yeah, he was making quite a few adjustments to his bow. So 10, 10, 10 for Panny. That's all confirmed. This is the important one. Glad to be back. I think two nines were called there for Fullerton, as yep. you called it. So a 28 for him. And that is a two point swing by the looks of things. A 59 plays a 57. Fullerton trailing by two after having one arrow marked up and one arrow marked down in the second end. Trails by two, and this time the Danish teenager will shoot first by virtue of the fact that he's trailing but needs to recover the arrows from the coach. And was his rhythm disrupted? the start of that set another one going for a measure for Fullerton Panny's got one hand on this medal by the looks of things certainly at the moment the momentum is with him much better looking shot from Fullerton than it, his timing was more consistent and it didn't look like a struggle to make it go off. Dropped point only for the second time in the match for Panyi. Yeah. So 29 for the pair of them here. Uh, but we do have a measure on the first arrow again for Fullerton. Potentially could get marked up to a 30 and close the gap by one. It's going to be tight. Let's see what the judge says. I don't know on this one. I, I thought Pag Pagney's second arrow might get a look. Well, they will look at both target faces. They will check the scores. Fullerton this time making sure he's got his arrows for the next step from, uh, next step from Damsbow. A little delay to the start of the third for his process because he didn't have any arrows in his quiver. Looks like we have had two 29s confirmed here. So it's an 88 for Panyi after three, and he leads Fullerton by two still. Fullerton on 86 will shoot first in the fourth end. Fullerton looking much more relaxed now since the arrow incident and uh, his shot timing now is so much better.
Much more flow now from Fullerton. As he found his groove, his first 30, pressure on Panyi now. Goes into the nine, maintains his lead, but only by one now. 117 plays 116, and John, you think Fullerton has found some form here. Fullerton has sped his shot up, he's found his rhythm and he's found the middle. And that last arrow to get his 30 then, he really meant it, he shot that into the 10. We refer to him as the Sultan of Smooth. Can Panyi hold his nerve under this pressure? We'll find out in the next three arrows. I don't want to make a prediction. That's what you're here for. <laughs> That's don't want to curse anyone. Don't want to curse anyone. It is all about whether the determination of the young Dane is enough to rattle the experience of the 42 year old Italian. It's time for end number five here. Fullerton fighting to stay in this medal match, trailing by a single point. We'll shoot first. Well, that's a tricky one to call. Likely to go to the measure for Fullerton. That looks a little bit more clear for Panyi. That was better shot from Fullerton. I think he rushed that first one. I think he was trying to put pressure on Pagni. Didn't help. Now we'll find out if Pagni can cope with that pressure. Two measured nine so far for Fullerton. That's a solid 10, provisionally on a 28, could get marked up to a 30. 10 puts it out of reach potentially, gets it into the 10, and that is a second perfect from Sergio Pagni for a 147. Even if the two arrows do get marked up from Fullerton, it's enough for Panyi to claim the bronze medal here in Nîmes. Scores, of course, will be important to Matthias Fullerton, but he's conceded the medal to the Italian. As we wait for confirmation of the scores, it's 117 for Panyi and the bronze medal. Fullerton is still having a measure done. Looks like one of them's been marked up to a 10. So that means that Fullerton finishes on a 145. But Paddy takes bronze here in the compound men's category. 147 to 145 over Matthias Fullerton. Pagni really showed there why he was known as the Sultan of Smooth. He really soaked up all the pressure that Fullerton threw at him. The, the years of experience Pagni had, Fullerton being the man of the moment, couldn't quite rattle Pagni enough to drop the big points at the key times. We take a look back over the match. Fullerton struggled at the beginning, dropping points 
not going through his process as well as he would have liked. Pagny keeping things solid throughout, keeping things very smooth indeed. A perfect in the second end and a perfect in the last. Took him through to the bronze medal, but there was a big rally from the 18-year-old Danish archer, Matthias Fullerton. Not quite enough in the end as Pagny find himself on the podium a little bit later on here in Nîmes. Time now to go for gold. It's time for the compound men's gold medal match. Judge and uh, coaches ready in the range as we await the presentation of the two athletes coming out for this gold medal match in the compound men's discipline. 21 year old world number 59, Nicola Girard from France, takes on his teammate, the world number nine, Jean Philippe Bouche, also of France, at 30 years old. What a feast for the French spectators here in Nîmes. And a chance to see two of their athletes going head to head, this time for gold, so they're guaranteed both the gold and the silver here in Nîmes. Which order? We're about to find out. These two athletes are both highly experienced and highly respected indoor shooters. Bolch has shot in these finals many times and had medals at this event in the past. Girard, a couple of weeks ago, equaled the world record with a perfect score of 600 out of 600 in a qualifying round. So time for the compound men's gold medal match. If this Girard France on target number one will shoot first against his more experienced compatriot Jean-Philippe Bouche. World number 59 will get the gold medal match started. This is how you start a gold medal match. Absolute perfection from both so far. Nine measure for Gerard. Can Bush get the perfect? Yes, he can. Perfect start for JP Bush for a 30. We wait for the measure on Nicola Girard's third arrow. Did you get a feel for that third arrow, John? Well, it wasn't the cleanest shot he made. His front arm was dipping down a bit as he, his shot broke. It's going to be on the line. Let's see what the judge says. Sounds like it has been marked up, both finishing with perfect scores despite the drop in form on process. It's 30 apiece between Girard and Bush. As we go into the second end here. 
Seems to be a little bit more explosion on Girard's back arm on the release, John. Any thoughts on that? He has a really aggressive attacking shot, which isn't always the norm for uh, this kind of indoor shooting. But as I said to you in the build-up, he has been the, the man shooting the big scores this indoor season around, around Europe. Time for end number two, all square between the two French athletes, Girard and Bouche. Neither have missed the 10 so far. Bit of a snatch on that one. I think he was rushing the shot. I wonder if the time was counting down and the result is a nine. And Bolsch is just putting him inside out in the ten ring at the moment. Twenty-nine for Girard. Twenty-nine for Bulge. His first drop points here. So fifty-nine. Now, at the moment, it's showing fifty-nine sixty. But I got uh, Girard's second arrow as a nine, John. I'm surprised that's going to a measure. I'm even more surprised that Bulge dropped his last one low. He looked so solid. Well, we wait for the scores to be confirmed. Definitely looked Just low for Borsch on his third arrow. Just had a bit of a dip, I suspect, on the on the site as he was executing. And that's the result. Low nine. Looks like it has been uh, recalculated to a 29 for Girard as well. So 59 plays 59 is confirmed here meme so Girard will shoot first number three you see that backhand curling away as Girard releases the shot, see the difference with uh, Bulsch and his release. He gave that a bit of English on the front as he tried to correct it. He must have known the dot was not over the middle. And you saw him swing his front arm across, trying to save the 10. But unfortunately, there was nothing he could do. And Bolsch really didn't look happy with that 10. That's perfectly in the 10. I don't know what's going on with him. I couldn't see anything odd. Nine called on the third arrow for Girard. Puts him on an 87. A perfect second one for Bush. Puts him on an 89. Now, another curious one for me. I thought the third arrow from Girard was in the 10. I'm, I'm really shocked I got called as a nine. Yeah, we wait again for the scores to be confirmed amended of course potentially
Walsh keeps shaking his head, but every time he shakes his head, his arrow is clearly inside the tent. The yeah. archers, though, perfectionists, perhaps not fully satisfied with his uh, execution. And we go into end number four here. With Girard trailing against his French compatriot, Bouche. Been good into that top target. Ten every time from Girard. Same though from Borsch with his first arrow. Going into bottom left. It's interesting that Girard actually has four fletchings on his arrow, four plastic veins on the back. It's very rare to see that. But it's definitely working really well for him. Bolsh had some forward movement then. Yeah. Good spot. Did you see as he came into the final anchor position, his hand just went forward and that'll move where the arrow is in the bow and it's very hard then to save a tent. Well, first perfect from Nicolas Girard. Puts him on a 117. A nine will match that from Borsch. A ten. A ten keeps him in the lead, but a 29 and some significant movement spotted by John Knott uh, from JP Borsch. So just go over that again, please, John. So he's getting what we call creep. Yeah. So he's just losing his back pressure and the arrow is creeping forward. But because of how the compound bows work, that actually moves how the arrow will shoot. So it won't act. It's really hard for him to still achieve a 10 at that point. And what are the reasons for creep? Is it is it fatigue, potentially? Nerves. Yeah, just a bit of nervous. And you, you creep off the, what they call the back wall, which is how far the string should pull back. So you just, as you're holding your anchor and you're a bit nervous, your hand goes forward along your face. And uh, yeah, it's uh, a compound archer's worst nightmare. Well, suffering from creep, JP Bulsh has allowed yeah. Nicola Girard to close back by a single point. But Girard still trails as we go into the fifth and final regulation end. It's 118 plays, 117. Bulsh leading this all French compound men's gold medal match. On for a measure that first arrow marked on the scoreboard provisionally as a nine. Much better form then from Bolsh sorted that out. Another one that's gone for a measure. Uh, messy because of how close the groupings are on the targets for Girard. Difficult for the uh, target judge to make his call. Potentially finishing with a 28 there, Girard. <laughs> Bangs it into the 10 for a 29. Now, if my math is right, that's a, a 147. If that stays the same for JP Borsch, but there's two 
potential markups for Nicolas Girard. The first two looks like the agent is happy for JP Bulsh. So 145 notionally on the board for Nicolas Girard. This measure is so important. Needs both to be converted to tens. Ten nine nine called for Girard. Ten ten nine. Ten ten nine called for JP Bush, and he has taken this gold medal match here in the compound men's division at the Neen Archery Tournament of 2022. He will stand on top of the podium at the first international event of the calendar year. What a performance from the pair of them there. Thought at one point that Girard was going to get himself back into that. Yeah, on that fourth end, Bolsh had a couple of quite scary moments with a suffering with a bit of creep in his form. But he came through it and he absolutely go nutted that last arrow he needed to secure the tent. Fabulous match up there between Nicolas Girard and compatriot from France, Jean-Philippe Bouche. Both starting off with perfect scores, both dropping a single point in the second. It all opened up in the third for JP Bouche. And he saw his way out of the competition with a second perfect score and two 29s to take gold here in Nîmes. <rire> Jean-Philippe, félicitations, tu Merci. viens de gagner cette médaille d'or au tournoi oui. de Nîmes. Quelle est ton, ta réaction après ce match ben, C'est pas facile, euh, international. Euh, bon, moi je l'emporte. Euh, C'était serré sur la dernière volée, on ne savait pas trop qui a fait quoi. Bon, ça passe, ben, content, un bon week-end. <rire> Tu as tiré contre un, un coéquipier que tu connais bien. Ouais. C'était, comme tu l'as dit, un match serré. Et euh, tu gagnes euh, sur... Euh, oh, sur euh, euh, voilà, <rire> exactement. Comment, euh, du coup, tu as, as géré cette pression-là euh, de ne pas savoir jusqu'à la fin euh, qui allait gagner ben, Flèche par flèche. Après, j'étais plus en position d'avance à la fin. Donc, euh, j'attendais, moi, de soit c'était le shoot-off ou, 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 ou la win. Donc, euh, j'étais dans la bonne position, on va dire. Mais ouais, non, après, flèche par flèche. Et tu es vraiment un habitué de Nîmes, hein. tu es médaillé de bronze en 2017 et puis surtout tu étais déjà le, le tenant du titre, du coup tu mmh. gagnes de nouveau cette année, c'est vraiment incroyable. Oui, je ne vais pas <rire> Est-ce que cette position, elle a joué sur ta façon d'aborder ce match Ah non du tout, parce que du coup c'est encore un nouveau Nîmes, donc toujours avec les mesures sanitaires, il y avait un peu plus de public que d'habitude, donc le terrain de finale, ce nouveau terrain de finale. Euh, non, on va dire que je voulais tirer ces flèches. <rire> Merci beaucoup Jean-Philippe, Merci, Merci encore. Au revoir. Well, lovely there, saying that uh, it's very good again here in Nîmes for Jean-Philippe Bourges. He's taken the compound men's gold medal here at the 22 edition of the tournament. A good weekend was his summary. I imagine he wanted to win this tournament more than any almost because it is the one most compound men want to win after Vegas. Well, the compound competition is done and dusted here in Nîmes. Time now for the recurve men's bronze medal match here in Nîmes. Our judge and coaches out. Crowd 
on the edge of their seats as we wait for the presentation of the athletes. This bronze medal match will be contested by the 23-year-old Italian here, Federico Musalesi. Each other 592 in qualification to be ranked fourth. But it's a 595 for this man and second seed, Alan Reymar of Croatia at 22 years old. Will be Musalesi's opponent for bronze here in Nîmes. Nice. John, thoughts on this one? Well, they're both pretty new to this kind of stage, but they showed shot absolutely fantastic in qualifying. Big scores from both of them qualifying in the top four. So let's see how they adjust to the arena and if they can carry on the standard that they were demonstrating yesterday. The 23-year-old Italian is the world ranked number 13 and favorite for this bronze medal. But he goes up against Alan Reymar of Croatia. Got nothing to lose, the 22-year-old. And he's taken out two Italians en route to this bronze medal match. Fisore 6-0. And in the quarterfinals, Morello 6-2. So he's got form against the Italians. Time for the recurve men's bronze medal match at Nîmes 2022. Alan Reymar of Croatia will get Set number one underway. the uh, first pair of recurve archers today we've seen shooting the bigger uh, aluminium arrows for the indoor tournament solid 29 got a chance for the set points for Musilesi with a 10 Called for a 10. I'm wondering if they'll double check that, but uh, at the moment, two set points going to the Italian. And a pretty confident call from the stadium announcer for a perfect for Federico Musilesi. Uh, John, you mentioned uh, these thicker arrows. Why use thicker arrows? Why use thinner arrows? What's the difference? Well, people will say they're for line cutters. And as you saw on the last arrow there from Musilesi, he caught the line of the 10 to win the set. Is it as simple as that? Is it as simple as fatter arrows just gives you more chance of cutting the line? It, yeah, absolutely true. That is why people use them. They are a fatter arrow, bigger diameter. So if you are slightly further away, but they can be less forgiving if you do make a poor shot. There you go. Miss Lessie with the first two set points leading this one. Bronze medal at stake. Alan Raymar of Croatia will shoot first in the second set. That's perfect for Alan Reymar of Croatia. Some pressure on Musilesi here. Needs a perfect to share the points. Drops it into the nine. 
for a 29 and that means the set points go to Raymar and we are two set points apiece here. Well, just a little bit of pressure there on Mr. Lester John, and uh, he dropped uh, his first points in this second set and has let uh, Raymar right back into this. Both athletes have been making really nice, quick attacking shots. And just on that six arrow then, Musilesi thought a little hard. The release gets a little bit loose. And he loses his first uh, nine of the match all square. Will certainly settle Alan Raymar's nerves. Has got himself on the scoreboard. He's all square. As we go into the third set. All up for grabs here in Nimes. Now, does the experience pay off here? Certainly taking advantage of the drop points there, Musilesi. Raymar now with the job of putting the pressure on with some big scores. Raymar looked like he just tightened up a bit on both of those shots. Paid the price on the first one, but his second one was nicely back in. Pressure on again. A 10 to save the points. Gets the 10. For a 29. Nothing between these two. And all of a sudden, the tension has gone up yet again here in this arena. Both of these guys are shooting nice shots, plenty of attacking arrows, they're getting on with it. Just the odd arrow popping out and they're keeping it nice and interesting for us spectators. They certainly are keeping it interesting. What seems to be uh, the, the test at the moment is when Raymar got, has got the chance to put some pressure on Musilesi, he's taken it twice. Once Musilesi's dropped a point the second time, Perhaps he's gained some experience and he's leveled up. We go into the fourth and really fine balance between these two. Musilesi of Italy, Raymar of Croatia going for bronze here in Nîmes. Raymar will shoot first again. Raymar's shots are looking absolutely brilliant at the moment. And Musilesi is uh, equally as good. <laughs> Taking three sets to warm up into this. Both have shot a 30 and 229s, which is why they are level. Wasn't sure what that was going to do, but he got it through strong. Second perfect from Raymar. Pressure on again to Miss Lessie. Well, that's gone into the nine. Four or 29, and the points, unless this is changed over by the target judge, We'll be going to Raymar, the Croatian leads for the first time. Well, 2-1 for Raymar when he's put the pressure on Musilesi. It really is an advantage when you get to shoot, when you're shooting first and you're shooting well. If you put that arrow in the 10, that's when you can turn the pressure screw 
on your opponent. Raymar has been lucky by shooting first, but now the order's going to switch. Musilesi has got a chance to do that back to Raymar, and can Raymar cope with it if Musilesi can shoot tenth? That's the question, isn't it? And you're quite right to point out that now that that uh, shooting right, the shooting going first right, goes to Musilesi. Well, down to set number five here. Raymar, one point away from taking a medal here in Nîmes. Musilesi to shoot first. Put the pressure on here. Big shot here from Raymar to settle his nerves in this final set. And nine opens the door again for Raymar. Big opportunity for the Croatian here. Raymar's form is looking really solid. He was being asked all the questions then, and he knew he had a chance, and he took it. A 29 for Musilesi, and nine will be enough to get the one point he needs. Will Raymar finish with a perfect? Yes, he does. Two in a row for Alan Raymar. He's taken this gold medal match in points, seven to three against Federico Musilesi. Musilesi would certainly have been the favorite going into the bronze medal match, but Raymar clung on, took the lead in the fourth, and then closed it out to take bronze in Nîmes in 2022. Got to give a lot of respect to Alan Raymar then. He looked great in that shooting. 14 of his 16 arrows in the 10 to win the bronze. Musilesi did put a good fight up, but on the big key pressure arrows, Raymar was the better shooter. So the Croatian will be on the podium here in Nîmes on the bronze medal step. Fabulous start from the Italian. Raymar only dropped two points himself throughout the match. And it was the pressure shots that played their part in this bronze medal match. Raymar shooting first, got to put the pressure on Musilesi. Musilesi crumbled twice. Having overcome an early pressure shot. And Raymar has taken the bronze here in Nîmes. Just one more to go here in Nîmes 2022. And now it's time for that final match. The recurve men's gold medal match. Here they come for the recurve men's gold medal match presentation. First up, it's Felix Visa of Germany, the world number 64, 28 years old. Shot a 596 in qualification to come through as the top seed in the knockout phase. Going up against the third seed who shot a 594 in qualification is 25 year old Dutch archer Steve Weyer. Steve is the world number 12. Well, this is a big one as well, John. This is as big as it gets. Uh, Weisner shot incredible to get to this gold final, qualifying number one. I think he shot two nines in all of his matches on the way to this final. Steve Wildler 
the Olympic mixed team silver medalist. He knows how to win matches. He will not be a pushover in this final. Yeah, fresh from the Tokyo Olympic Games, Steve uh, shot Team Silver, as John says, with uh, Gabriela Schlusser. There he is, an Olympic medalist. That gives you a certain spring in your step, that's for sure. But Felix Weiser, the German, as John has said, has been one of the four marchers here. Number one seed coming through the ranking rounds and has only dropped just seven set points through his four matches to make it through here. Steve Vaya though, well number 12 with bags of experience. It's time for the recurve men's gold medal match here in Nîmes. And it's over to Felix Weiser of Germany. That arrow clipping the line for the German. Weiler using the thin arrows, clearly inside the line. Weiser well, there showing why people do choose to use the fat arrows. But Weiler doesn't need him at the moment. Curse of the commentator. Weiler going out for a nine there. Visa on a measure for his second arrow. We think it's a ten. That's also going to go to a measure. That one's slightly more dubious. So provisional 28 for Visa. Definite 29 for Viola. Now, two arrows going to a measure here, John. I thought the second one looked good to me. The third one I wasn't so sure of. Really hard to tell, but what we will know after the judges made his decision is was it worth shooting those fat arrows? 10-10-10 called for Visa there, if I'm not mistaken. That's a 30, and I think the set points will go to him. Wrong way around, but it was 10 10 10. For Viola. Now we just wait for this because nothing's been updated. 10 10 no, 10, 10 was, was called for Visa. It's two set points to the German on two measured arrows, both being marked up. So 29 28 for Viola turns into a 30 29 in favor of the German. What a measure that was! Absolutely. I think that truly showed there why Weiser chose to shoot the fatter arrows. Violet will start set number two here, trailing by two points. Such a measured, controlled shot from Steve Weiler. You can see how strong he is. You can see all the work that he puts in to control his shot and his bow the way he does. Just holding on for the perfect there. Steve Vala on the 30, but can be matched by Visa here for a share of the points. Ten, ten, ten. 
Pops it into the 10 for his second perfect score and a 3-1 lead after two sets against Steve Weiler. Felix Visa looking very strong and looking very composed. One question, Bang. John Not. I've got one question for you, sir. Why would you not shoot fat arrows? A lot of the athletes are probably still training at 70 meters and they just, in some countries, so they choose not to change their arrows. It depends if you've got different, because you need to set your bow up very differently or that arrow feels very different when you shoot it as well. It's not easy to swap. So if you've committed to doing a, a big indoor season and you want to be competitive, set your bow up for the fat arrows. If you have still got one eye on the outdoor this year, you'd probably carry on shooting your outdoor skinny carbons. Well, there you go. Gives you some kind of insight into how these two athletes are preparing for the season ahead. Steve Weyer from the Netherlands is trailing Felix Weiser here in Germany. Gets set number three underway with a 10. Fat arrow again coming to the aid of Felix Visa. Visa has an incredibly steady aim. Second perfect in a row for Steve Vier of the Netherlands. Will it be three for Felix Visa? Yes, it will be. What great shooting from the German. He's now 4-2 up. Going into the fourth set here. So, John, what can Steve Vier do here? He is the more experienced athlete. He is shooting first. He is putting the pressure down on, on Visa, but Visa has not capitulated once yet. Well, Steve really is doing everything right. He keeps shooting 10 after 10 after 10, but Visa just soaking up the pressure like a sponge and is, uh, is it's almost like his bow is on a holder. It's so still at full draw. It's absolutely incredible. Incredible it is. It's time to go into the fourth set here in this gold medal match. The last of the action here at the Neem Archery Tournament of 2022. Steve Vier of the Netherlands is trailing four points to two to Felix Visa of Germany. It will be the Dutch archer to shoot first in this fourth set. No cracks showing yet on the Germans. Process or posture. Viola has not missed the 10 since the third arrow of the first set, dropping his only point on the second arrow. And that's what's making the difference at the moment. Caught the line. Again. <laughs> A bit of Boquondo there from Steve Vier for a third perfect in a row. Will it be another one from 
visa here. It certainly is. And he's on for a perfect commentator's curse, of course. Leading 5-3 after four. Visa hasn't dropped any points. To be fair, he's benefited from at least four line cutters. A couple of them very close indeed. But that puts him on 120 out of 120, sorry, 160 out of 160. It's, it, it's a phenomenal potential scoreline here in terms of the total score, but it's all about these set points. Uh, Viola's got to keep the pressure on. He's got to win this fifth set. Absolutely, Viola does have to win this set. He's doing everything right. He's shooting fantastic. He just needs one crack. That's all he needs. The visor, that bow is just not moving. You can't, you know, normally you can see a bow move, Prim, I've heard you say it so many times, but that bow is not moving. Time for the fifth set here in this gold medal match, the recurve men's event in Nîmes. Via trailing five sets to three, needs to put some pressure on shooting first. Get to 10. We're looking here, if you're supporting Steve Vaya for a cracking Felix Visa's approach to the draw and release none shown so far and that remains hasn't missed the 10 of the german that one he gave that a little bit but he got it in there he is giving it absolutely everything uh, Visor's finger placement on the string, which is not showing this time, is absolutely textbook. I've never seen a bottom finger on the string so well. Absolutely brilliant for anybody upcoming starting archery. One arrow left for each of these archers. Violet gets his fourth perfect in a row. Having just dropped one point in the first, a 10 will take it, a 9 will take it. Can he do it? It's on the line. Wow. It is a 10. It is five perfects in a row for Felix Weiser. And the German has done it here, six points to four. But really, he did it in the very first set where Viola dropped just one point throughout the entire match. That was where the German Felix Visa picked up the points he needed to take gold here in Nîmes. John, if you shoot 160 points, 150 points, then you are you basically, uh, you can only be matched. And dropping one point just isn't enough. It's... The only thing I can say about that, it was almost cruel on Steve Waller, who shot absolutely incredible through the whole match. But one tiny miss was all it took. And Visor was an absolute machine, rock steady. I don't even know if he had a heartbeat in that match. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure he did. He's still standing there, but it's uh, beating very slowly and staying very calm felix visa of germany takes the compound sorry the recurve men's gold medal here at the first international tournament of 2022 here in Nîmes. As is becoming the norm, the athletes donning their sanitary masks and uh, Felix Visa there getting the nod. He needs to make his way over to the interview spot in the mix zone. He is the champion of the Neem Archery Tournament 2022 and we want to hear what he has to say. 
been a superb few days here in France. It's great to be back. Not quite normal yet, but we're getting there. We are getting there, and what a brilliant start to the international live coverage we're bringing you from World Archery throughout this year, starting with this fantastic tournament in Nîmes. One of the favourites and one of the big ones for these archers to have medals and gongs from. Music's gone down. It might be time to go and have a chat very shortly with Felix Visa. Oh, here he is. Congratulations, Felix. You just won the title here in Nîmes. How do you feel after this amazing match? Great. Just great. Thank you at first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's an incre incredible feeling. Uh, I can't believe it. I'm here for many times and the first time uh, I shot here in the in a medal final and won is, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, you confirm your number one um, uh, position at the qualifications and exceptional shooting uh, in this final match with a high level opponents. It was a very tight match with four perfect ones in a row for both of you. How did you manage it? <laughs> uh, I think it's hard to say, but uh, it's easy. It's a day or it's not a day. When it's a day, uh, it's, it's easy. It, you just have to be focused and uh, your shooting is good. Your feelings are great. And when it's a day, it's easy. When it's not a day, it's maybe impossible. But Today was the day. <laughs> you were in the place, when we say. And um, so you said it was your first uh, finals here in Nîmes. Are you happy to have won it? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I think it's one of my greatest success. OK, so thank you very much and congratulations again. Thank you, you're welcome. One of his greatest successes. What a brilliant performance from Felix Visa. I think he was basically saying he had his mojo today and it all came easy to him. Uh, well, listen, thank you to you, John. It's been fabulous to have your insight as always. Thank you very much, Krim. Enjoyed it very much. And thanks to all of you for watching this first live event of 2022. Plenty more to come, including the action from Las Vegas coming to you at the start of February. It's been superb action here in the finals hall at the Nîmes Archery Tournament of uh, 2022. We've seen Priels taking compound women's gold, Barbalan taking the recurve women's gold for France, Bouche of France taking the compound men's gold, and Felix Visa of Germany finishing things off with the recurve men's gold medal. A beautiful performance and a beautiful tournament here in Nîmes. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.